So what we have here are two identical pearl Sensitone uh, steel shell snare drums. Um, this one I've already done some work on. This is the old head that was on there. There it is with the new Evans uh, Strata 700 on there. Um, my preferred head of choice for concert snare drums. There's the other one with a old, obviously a little bit beat Remo Ambassador on it. Um, so what we're looking at here, like I said, these are two identical drums. Both came in with some problems. Um, this first one had some issue with the snares sounding really rattly and obviously the head was not in great shape. Uh, so what I did was first off I cleaned the shell up a little bit. I mean at a certain point there's only so much you can do to get that tarnish off of there after it sat for so long. But So the snares were rattling no matter what tension you set them at. So what was happening was that on the side for the butt plate over here um, the the end of the snare wire was hanging over the counter hoop and so it created a unlevel uh, surface for the snares to sit on. So no matter what you did, you couldn't get them to actually tighten down to all the snares touch at once. So the snares were just out of balance. And so what I did was I just adjusted the cord and I retied the knots there and got it so that the snares are in balance and it, and it sounds great now. This other drum here has uh, some other issues as well. Um, obviously needs a new top head here. Uh, it appears that the snares are at least in balance on this one. They're not, they're evenly placed there. So that's all good. Um, although I don't like the way these snare cord are fed through here. That's not a very secure way to keep that from feeding back through. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, retie the snare cords today. Um, and then also this one is gonna need a new bottom head, obviously. So let's, uh, Let's check that out. So this is the one that I haven't started working on yet with the hole in the bottom head. So I'm just going to play it a little bit just for reference. So really honestly, with as in poor shape as it is, it doesn't sound too terrible. Uh, although with that level of muffling and a hole in the bottom head, it's very dry. There's not a lot of resonance. You're not hearing the shell at all because that resonant head obviously has a huge hole in it. But the snares obviously are in good adjustment. They're, they're responsive. Um, and the head is just muffled to just craziness. There's no, no reason to need to muffle a head that much, um, especially on a concert scenario. This would be great maybe for a, a rock kit if you were playing some classic rock. It's got the nice kind of big fat sound, but for a concert snare, that's not really what we want. So uh, let's compare that to the snare with the new setup on it. So this has the same uh, ambassador clear side head and the snares are now back in adjustment. I retied the knots and it's got a new Evans Stratus series uh, concert snare drum head on it. Um, and you're gonna hear that it's got a little bit more uh, resonance to it and a little bit more snap. So. Responds really well. I mean, having this other head on it makes the stick response. It's easier to play. You can hear there's a, just a little bit of ring there, which you do want, and it's just it's really it's got a lot more fire to it. It really snaps. It sounds actually really great with just that head on there. So uh, let's fix the other one up. I've got this uh, disassembled here. I took the old snares all the way off and loosened everything, got the hoops off. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the shell. Um, so this is a uh, steel alloy shell. It does have a lacquer finish on it. Um, so you can really use kind of any, any lacquer finish polish. It doesn't really have to necessarily be a specific polish on this. You could even use Windex if you wanted to, as long as you get it dry when you're done here. Um, now with something like this, where it's got so much, um, 
gunk on it. There's going to be a level of corrosion that's happened here. That's just there's nothing I'm going to be able to do um, with polish, no matter how much, uh, without actually marring the finish to actually get that off of there. So we're just going to clean as much of it off as we can, and uh, just we're going to have to be happy with that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a Dunlop spray polish here, Formula 65. I mean, it worked really well on the other one, and I'm sure it'll work well on this one too. So. kind of cleaned up to the best of my ability like I said it's not gonna be perfect because some of that is actually it's, it's eaten away at the finish but uh, it looks much better than it did before um, you can see as well on the hoops they look substantially better there so that's gonna help I clean the inside so that uh, everything will sit flush with the once the snare head is on so um, let's get Putting her back together, we'll throw some heads on here. Right okay, so we're gonna start putting some heads back on this thing here and get it all kind of put together. So I've got a Evans uh, snare side 500 series, it's five mil single ply snare side head um, to go on here. And the other head we had was hazy, but doesn't really make that big of a difference. So that's what we've got and that's what we're gonna put on. So uh, obviously when I put the hoop back on, I wanna make sure I put the correct hoop back on and that I put it on with it lined up where it belongs so we want to get it so that the lugs line up but also so that the uh, the openings for the snare wires line up with where they belong there so um, don't have to do this doesn't affect the tone at all but it's just kind of an OCD thing um, I always like to line up the logo with the front logo of the snare drum that way when you look down through the drum when you're playing the drum the logos are, are aligned with each other um, and that it's facing straight forward when you're playing so uh, just a pet peeve of mine, but it's not its not a big deal. It doesn't affect the tone at all, obviously. So uh, I'll throw some lugs in here and get this thing to finger tight. Okay, so now I've got this head on here, uh, just finger tight. Um, and I'm gonna start tuning it here. So <laughs> I don't want to set myself up for a lot of criticism here, but I have tuned a lot of drums. Um, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So this is how I do it. There's obviously lots of valid ways to do this, uh, but this is kind of how I at least get started. For me, the one thing I'll always say is that the most important thing is that in the end result, it sounds good. If you have to break the rules to make it sound good, then break the rules to make it sound good. But at least this is a really good starting point and should get you somewhere close to a good sounding instrument that is within its tuning range, okay? You don't want to tune an instrument outside of its range. Just like tuning a guitar really low or really high, you're gonna break strings or have them be floppy. Same thing goes for drums. There's, there's a range of pitch that you can really tune a drum to and actually have it sound good and natural and have it reproduce the way you want to and have like a good feeling tension to it. Um, if you go too far outside of that range, it's either going to be floppy when you play or it's going to be really, really high and tight or just it's not going to sound right. So you have to kind of be within a range. And this is how I determine that. Okay, So this is a steel shell snare. Um, and so what I do is I'll take and I'll listen real quick here. I'm going to muffle the head. It's loose. It shouldn't make any noise anyway. But I'm going to knock on the pitch of the shell okay, and try and determine roughly where that is pitched at. And then as I tune the head up, I obviously want to go you know, across all the way around just in small and in half turn increments to get it up to pitch. And then that is the fundamental of the shell. And I want to get this resonant head within probably a whole step or a minor third above or below that uh, fundamental pitch of the shell. And then obviously make sure that all of the tension of the lugs is in tune with itself. So I'm gonna tune them up all, just half turn at a time all the way around get them up near that fundamental pitch, uh, pick one lug that I really like, and I'm gonna tune all the other lugs to that lug, 
and then that'll be kind of my starting point for the resonant head because the resonant head when you hit the drum is the pitch that you hear right the batter head doesn't have much to do with the actual pitch you hear when you strike the drum so that's also going to determine the tension for your snares and how your snares react with that bottom head so it needs to be relatively tight um you know not quite tabletop tight but it needs to be pretty darn tight um, to get to that level, especially with a, a five mil single ply head here. So I'm going to go ahead and t uh, tighten these up and then we'll go back and we'll kind of we'll talk about the tuning a little bit more once we get there. So here I am, I've got kind of some tension here. Uh, I've got it up kind of roughly where I want to be. So uh, I'm going to check and see where I'm at in, in reference to the fundamental of the drums. So if you Can still go up a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring these all up about a quarter turn here. Okay, so I brought that up here, uh, just a quarter turn all the way around. Uh, gonna check again, see where that got me. So right around in there, it's just a little bit lower than the fundamental of the shell, which you don't want to get it perfectly into the fundamental of the shell unless you really want the shell to ring, which we want a little bit of ring, but we don't want a lot. So having it in a really close interval where it's just slightly dissonant um, will, will cause the shell actually to, to resonate less than having a more consonant uh, tuning from the bottom head to the shell. Um, so that should sound just about right. Now the other thing I'm going to check here, because I have two snare drums, I did the same process on the other snare drum, although it has a slightly different uh, bottom head on it. I'm going to check the tuning of the bottom head on my other drum in reference to this because, again, I want these two snares to sound the same. So we grab another drum. We'll check it out here real quick and see where we can get. So anytime you're working with snares here and you need to check the bottom head tuning, a lot of times the snares can get in the way. Um, so one thing that I like to do is just take a stick and stick it under the snares and just kind of lift them up there so that they're, they don't make any noise. So um, I'm going to go ahead and check kind of the, just the center head pitch of this snare and compare it to the other one. Still a little bit lower here, so this one I must have gone just slightly higher than the fundamental of the shell, so I'm going to bring this one up just a little bit more because I, I need to match it this one. I really like the way this one sounds. So. Now keep in mind here, um, this one still hasn't been really totally tuned into itself. So I'm just trying to get the center head pitch to be relevant and then I'll pick whichever lug is closest to the pitch of this drum and tune everything back to that lug. So let's check where that quarter turn brought us here. It's still just a tiny bit of a smidge lower. So we're gonna go one more quarter turn all the way around here. All right, here we go. Those are pretty much exactly the same pitch there. So now what I need to do is I need to pick whichever lug here is closest to the pitch of this drum. So we'll compare two lugs. So I got that right on. So I'm gonna pick this lug as my reference pitch. I'm gonna tune everything, double check it one more time. That one's actually a little bit low. Let's try another one. That one's a little high. There we go, those two are the same. I'm going to pick this one here and go, I'm going to tune everything back to that lug. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to work my way out from that lug to get all the other lugs to sound that same pitch. So I'm going to get the drum out of the way and we'll keep going with that. So here I'm going to kind of work my way around here. So this is my reference pitch. That's the pitch that I like. So I'm going to try and get the rest of these lugs to sound like that. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to work sideways. And as I work sideways, I'm also going to work across because the pitch, the tension here affects the tension here. So first I'm going to check, is this lug same pitch as this one? If not, I need to get them to be. So yes, they are. So these two are the same pitch. So now I'm going to go to the one next to it and then also the one across from it. So, so that's higher. So I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. Still higher. Let's check this one over here also higher so I'll bring that down a little bit bring this one back down a smidge too still a little higher
helps to sometimes put your middle finger, put your finger there in the middle, so you're killing the overtone when you're hearing it. It's a little lower, so I'm bring that back up here. Well, it's important to make sure you're hitting, striking the same distance from the lug on the head. This one's still a little high and that one's right on now. Too far down, bring it back up a bit. Okay, so those are pretty close. Now I'm gonna move back this way. Too low. So, now I've got this one kind of tuned back up where I like it, um, so that it's in tune with itself. So again, I'm going to check it between this one so that they're tuned to the same pitch and make sure that what I did here didn't get me out of whack with what's going on here. So Really, really close. I think I ended up bringing this one up just a little bit more. So we'll just really carefully just barely give a tiny crank to each one to bring that down and kind of get it closer here. So. Okay. Really, really close to unison there, so we're gonna call that good enough. Um, once we get the top head on, that'll that'll balance out. So uh, now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna feed the snares back on. I'll show you guys how I wanna tie those. Um, and then we'll go to getting those tension and putting the top head on, so. Okay, so we're gonna get the snares put on here. I'm gonna feed them through each side. These kind of these wires already have record, already have a little bit of history to them here, um, so we're gonna have to kind of work with that. But so important thing is making sure that these are balanced across. Right, you don't want one to be pulled too far to one side. Otherwise, you're gonna have it out of balance, and it's never gonna. No matter how much you tighten it, the snares are never all gonna rest on the head evenly. You're just gonna have this weird buzzy noise. Okay, and it's a really common problem that a lot of people don't pay attention to. So um, it's actually incredibly important for the sound of your snare drum to have the snares in balance. Uh, so I always tie the butt plate first because here's what's gonna happen. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that the butt plate is close to the edge but not overlapping. And then when I use the mechanism on the other side, the actual throw off mechanism, it's going to let this side kinda pull in and, and go back out, okay? But this side is pretty much gonna stay fixed for the most part. Most of your wiggle room is gonna be over here. So you do wanna get it close to this side so that you have just a little tiny bit more wiggle room over here, uh, but you don't wanna get it again so close that it's um, out, of, out of balance. So uh, I'll show you kinda here how I tie a knot. Um, so I've got my little plate there loosened. I've got the snare wire fed through. Another thing that's really important, most good snares will have a groove here for the cord to feed underneath. So you put the cord through, right? The tag ends through the top and then feed that under the bottom and then pull it out, right? And that allows a space so that the cord isn't making the snare drum or the snares miss contact with the snare. If I put these through the other way, right? And I'll actually just do that real quick here. If I put these through the other way, what you're gonna find is that it's gonna make it so that I can't actually get even contact with this metal piece on the snare. See how that's, it's not sitting properly because it's got this big lump in the middle now, okay? So you need to be aware of that when you're doing your snares. Not all snares have that, most good ones do. Um, you know, the other thing sometimes you run into uh, is sometimes when you buy new snares, if they're not, uh, very expensive ones, these will be sharp and you'll keep breaking the cord, okay? So there's no reason for that to happen. 
So uh, when that's going on, you just go in there with a little piece of sandpaper or whatever, something like that, or a file, and just kind of flatten those out and get that burr off of there. Um, these ones are great. These are great snares. These are the original snares that came on this Sensitone snare drum. Um, so it's a really cool deal. Uh, I'm going to show you real quick how to tie that knot. So again, more than one way to skin a cat. Um, so I'm not going to say this is the only way to tie snare wires. This is just the way that I do it, okay? So I'm going to get these fed through this plate here, give myself enough room to get that through there. All right. And then I'm going to get these positioned so that it's got one coming down on one side, one coming down on the other side, just straight through like that. And then I'm going to check and make sure I have, you know, room right here um, so that it's close to the edge of the, of the counter hoop, but not, uh, not touching it. So then I'm going to go and I'm just going to tie a simple overhand knot. Okay. And those kind of shifted and they always do. Get those back to where I want them. Sometimes it helps if you have an extra person's hands there to just kind of hold those in position while you do this. But uh, this will be close enough. So I'm going to double check and make sure that that's not going to be out of whack there. Okay, so I'm going to tie this double, two overhand knots, just one over top of the other. Okay, and then I'm going to double check. Yep, so when that's pulling on there, it's really close to the edge, but it's not touching the edge. So then I'm going to tighten this down, make sure the knot is on the outside of this uh, butt plate here. I don't want it in the center of the butt plate. I want it on the other side so that it's stopping it from going through there. See what I mean? So get that and then just hold it back there. Really kind of crank it down. Be careful because these lugs a lot of times can be cheap. You can actually break off the lug inside um, the, the casing there and it's not fun to have to fish that back out. Um, so that's the butt plate side. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna balance out the other side here real quick. So you can see really, really close to the edge of the counter hoop there, but it's not actually touching. So it can still, when it's got tension, it's gonna lay flat and it's gonna make the snares all be in contact with the head. So, all right, so I'm essentially gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now what I always do is I get the strainer so that the up and down adjustment here, right? This is what allows it to go up or down and adjust your tension. is kind of set in the middle. So this was cranked all the way down which tells me that before they didn't have the snare set tight enough when they put them on, okay? So I'm gonna try and get this towards the middle so that I have room to go up and room to go down, right? I wanna have room to adjust both ways here. So, and then with it down, in the down position so that it's closer, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. I'm gonna feed it, feed my cord through here under the plate, just one by one, maybe. Give myself a little bit more room here. All right, so get those both pulled through there. Okay, now with this down, I've got plenty of room to adjust. So I don't even, it doesn't need to be tight at this point. That's why I gave myself room to adjust. I just need to be able to very easily and casually tie this double overhand knot here, okay? So overhand knot and then another overhand knot. And then I'm gonna cinch those down, okay? And it's still, it's pretty slack. There's lots of room there, okay? And that's what you want because I wanna be able to adjust. Okay, I don't want it so that when I put this on that it's just always choked because you need to be able to have it off and be able to have the snares off to a point where you can use it like a tenor drum or something like that where it's not um, making any snare sound at all, right? You want to be able to have the snares completely off and not making any noise. So again, carefully going to get these down firm, but I'm not going to over tighten them so that I break them off in there. It's just got to be enough to hold the cord. And with that knot there, that's not going anywhere, right? So that's perfect, just like I said. So now when I tighten this, you can see I got plenty of room to tighten that. So I'm actually going to loosen it a little bit more here so that I don't hurt the snares. And I've got really good contact. You can hear how great that sounds. And that sounds just like your snare drum. And that's what's happening when you hit the snare drum is the force from the batter head is causing this to agitate that bottom head. So it's going to, now we're just going to tune the top head pretty much to tension just to feel right. And uh, the pitches of the two drums should, should end up being the same. So we're going to flip this over and get that done here real quick. Okay, so what I've got here is an Evans uh, Strata 700 drum head. I want to get this set so that it's uh, lined up with the front logo there. Again, it doesn't affect the tone. I just like the way that it looks. I'm going to get this batter head dropped into place here. Make sure that it actually goes over the hoop of the drum head there. And then I'll take all my lugs and I'm going to get these finger tight. Okay, so now I've got this head on here.
here, it's finger tight just on all the lugs all the way around, okay? So they're just in as far as they'll go as much as I can do with just my finger strength there on the side of the lug, okay? So now with the batter head, really, we're just setting it for tension. I need for it to respond um, and feel good when I play on it. So uh, when I did the other one, it was about three and a half, four cranks to get it up to like a, a very comfortable playing tension. So um, I'm gonna go half turns at a time all the way around. Uh, if you go too far at once, you can warp the head or make stuff go wonky. So you just, you gotta keep it balanced as you go around. And I find a half turn is a good increment to go in when you're starting out, so. Okay, I went ahead, I brought this up about two full turns now all the way around the drum. So I was, at this point, I wanna go ahead and check it and kinda see where we stand. I can feel it's getting pretty tight. So I think that's probably about where we wanna be. Wanna give that a tap? got a really nice sound it's very responsive I'll grab a stick and check it here real quick but I think that's about where we want to be so it feels very good it's responsive it feels like a concert snare drum should now I'm just gonna check that tension against the tension of the other snare drum here and uh, make sure that they both sound the same and I'm also gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tune this head to itself to make sure that that top batter head doesn't have any dissonant you know, or any lugs that are way out of whack here so I'm gonna double check that real quick And this is the one that I just finished, and you got the whole video of me doing it here, so let's see how they compare. Now, there is just a little bit of difference there. They're both tuned to the same pitch, but you can tell the resonant head is just slightly different. So, um, unfortunately, uh, this particular customer only wanted to replace the heads that absolutely had to be replaced. So I'm, this was the head that I had and that's what we had to use. Um, so that's as close as we're gonna get them with having different types of resonant heads. So uh, if I had my preference, I would contact that customer and update this head as well so that we had them both to sound, I mean, get them sound really, really, very, very close, exactly the same. They sound really similar now, but they could sound slightly more similar if they had the exact same resonant head. It's just, they're the same thickness and everything like that. One's hazy and it's a Remo and one is Evans and it's clear and that's affecting the tone just a little bit. But.